levels, sublevels, and orbitals within the atom. So the first step is to um, learn about the energy levels. The energy levels, um, basically, if we have the nucleus, the energy levels of an atom are kind of like concentric circles going around the nucleus. It would actually be three-dimensional, but the energy level that is closest to the nucleus would be designated energy level one. The, en the next energy level would be energy level two, and so on and so forth. And if we drew a fourth one, it would be energy level four. Okay? So these are the main energy levels. Each level can hold a specific number of electrons. So once the first energy level is full, then we would start to put electrons on the second energy level. And when it is full, we'd move to the third energy level and begin to fill it. And we would do this consecutively. So our energy levels, we have energy level one, two, three, and four. Okay, so for energy level one, or every energy level is d subdivided into sublevels. The sublevels actually have letter designations. Okay. In energy level one, we have one sublevel and it's designated letter S. Okay. For energy level two, we have two sublevels. We have S and we have P. For the third energy level, we have three sublevels, S, P, and D. And for the fourth energy level, we have four sublevels, S, P, D, and F. Okay? So whatever the energy level number is, that's how many sublevels there are. These sublevels are then again divided into orbitals. Orbitals are the areas where you're most likely to find the electrons in the atom. Each sublevel has a specific number of orbitals. The S sublevel contains one orbital. The P sublevel contains three orbitals. The D sublevel contains five orbitals. And the F sublevel contains seven orbitals. Okay. These orbitals are kind of like the rooms where you're most likely to find those electrons in the atom. Those orbitals, each orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons each. So we can determine how many electrons each sublevel and level can hold. So number of electrons per sublevel. If each orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons, the S sublevel has one orbital, it can hold two electrons. So two electrons for the S. The P has three orbitals, so it can hold two electrons in each orbital, which gives you a total of six electrons. The D orbital a D sublevel has five orbitals, so it can hold a maximum of 10 electrons. And last but not least, the F. F can hold a maximum of 14 electrons. Okay, so all of the electrons that are part of an atom are going to be organized into a level and a sublevel. We're going to fill them by starting with our lowest energy level first and then the lowest sublevel. When it's full, we move to the next energy level, fill the first sublevel, then we fill the second sublevel, and then we move to the ne next energy level. And we'll move through these um, and fill each consecutive level. Um, the order of the filling is actually not the same as listed on this chart. Um, we will go to the periodic table to discuss how these different levels and sublevels are filled.
There we go. So on the periodic table, we can actually divide the periodic table into our different sublevel groups. If you look at the first two columns of the periodic table, which we have highlighted, and it also includes helium, which is over on the right side of the periodic table, these make up your S block elements. Okay, so that means the last electron uh, in their atom is going to be in the S block, okay, or sublevel. The P block are these six columns over here, okay, and that means the last electrons in that atom will be in the P sublevel. The D block are the middle elements here, and they represent the transition elements. Their last electrons, as we do our organization scheme, will end up in the D sublevel. And last but not least, we have our F block down here. The lanthanides and actinides um, are part of the F block. Okay? So, if you recall, our uh, S sublevel elements can hold a maximum of, those orbitals can hold a maximum of two electrons, right? So these are the first two columns. Our P sublevels can hold a maximum of six electrons. So if we look at our P sublock, we have one, two, three, four, five, six columns. Those would be the six electrons that would fill the P block for that energy level. The D block, D sublevel can hold a maximum of 10 electrons. There are 10 columns across the D block here. So that means that these electrons would fill the D sublevel. And last but not least, we have our F block again. F has seven orbitals, can hold a maximum of 14 electrons, and there are 14 elements across here. So those would be our 14 electrons that would fill the F block. Okay. From this information about how the elements are organized, um, we can then do um, orbital diagrams and electron configurations, which will be the next um, way that we'll use this information.